The Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. It's time for the good news. And here are the headlines. Great news for the poor. New sight for the blind. The message of God's acceptance. Just remain standing for a moment and let's bow in prayer. Wonderful are you, God of Christ Jesus. By your spirit, lead us in this time of worship that we may be lifted beyond our knowledge and higher than the words of our prayers. Set us free to receive your hospitality and to enjoy with delight your wonderful presence. Wonderful are you, glorious are you, today, yesterday and forever. Amen. And we remain standing and sing together the great love of God. very warm welcome to each and every one of you, whether you're here in, in person or you're watching us online. We have some special oh, newcomers with us this morning and I think uh, I'm going to invite uh, Shagig to come forward and introduce them to us. Today we welcome uh, Father Timotheus uh, from the ancient church of uh, East in Iraq and his family, Yunia and the daughters Juliana and Diana. Very special welcome to you. It is a real blessing that you're with us and we know that you've been on a long and difficult journey and we thank you, you, you can share with us. And later in the service, they're going to be singing for us. And I've asked Father Timotheus to say the blessing at the end of the service. We're this morning going to be looking at some of the hard and powerful sayings of Jesus about love and forgiveness. And uh, the Old Testament lesson for today is the story of Joseph and his impressive coat. It, wasn't, it doesn't say technicolour in the book of Genesis, but I think thanks to uh, Tim Rice's words, that's what we think about. We think of Joseph and his technicolour dream coat. Just briefly, I'd like to invite you. Am I on with the portable mic, Phil, so I can move away? Yeah. Um, I'd like to, you to help me remember the story. What happens in the story of Joseph and his coat? Just a few, just a few, just key elements of the story. Yeah, his father gave him a special coat, and do you know why? Because he loved him more than the the other twelve. Oh. Now someone else said something there, and I missed it. Was, you said the same. <laughs> uh, what happened because of that? The jo brothers were jealous. They cracked it big time. <laughs> 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 and, 
And so what happened then? I'll, I'll, I'll give Mike a go this time. There will, you, what's up, Mike? Yeah, they, they threw him down a hole and sold him off. And what did they tell, well, they went back and told Jacob. What did they tell him, the dad? He'd been killed. And they brought the coat back and they'd put blood on it, hadn't they? It's not a good story. <laughs> um, actually, I was rereading it and I was thinking, yeah, this is quite, this is quite messy. Anyway, what happened after that? He ends up, well, he gets taken to Egypt in the end, doesn't he? By slave traders. Mm, yeah. And he gets sold to a, uh, what, I forgot what the guy did, but he got sold off. And then he got in strife because of uh, Potiphar. Potiphar? Potiphar. Yeah, yeah. And ends up in, the, in jail. What happens in the jail? He reads. Uh, <laughs> Bob's read his Bible. <laughs> <laughs> He interprets dreams, that's right. And there's a baker and the king's cup, or the pharaoh's cupbearer in jail with him. And as a result of that, the poor old baker gets strung up <laughs> and the, uh, the, the, uh, the pot, the, the, the goblet bearer gets uh, sent back to um, Pharaoh. And they promise that if everything turns all right, out all right, they'll get him out of the clink. Of course, they forget about that. So he's stuck in jail. And then what happens? Pharaoh is in strife. He's had terrible dreams about, was it lambs or sheep or something? Yeah. Anyway, it's, it do, he's feeling very uncomfortable at these dreams. So they get, they get Joseph up. He interprets the dreams. I'm going to cut the story a bit short. <laughs> he, ends up, he, he ends up becoming, of course, the governor and a very powerful person in the land. And then what happens? There's a famine. There's a famine. And what happens with his family? The brothers, come. the brothers come looking for help. Now, it all gets very complicated <laughs> at this point, but they don't recognise that Joseph is now this, this sort of basically the prime minister of, um, of Egypt. They don't recognise him. But what happens at the very end? Because uh, Joseph doesn't let on for a while. But what happens at the very end? Jason Donovan was very good. But what happens in terms of the relationship between Joseph and his brothers? It's re-established. Joseph effectively forgives them. So it's a very, very powerful story. And, and it's worth a read again. Although, you know, I re when I reread it, I realised that, you know, you could, you'd have to have an SBS warning on the book of Genesis because it's, it, <laughs> it's pretty blunt. <laughs> so that's our Old Testament text. It's a story of, it, the detached text is about Joseph forgiving his brothers. And the be, that what they thought they were doing badly, God was in it. Exactly. God was in it all. Yeah. And that leads to the, to the restoration of the family. And that's the whole point. But, but uh, yeah, thanks, Barry. Let's listen now to our gospel lesson. morning everybody I think this is one we should all read in the and as we read it we, we're looking at ourselves in the mirror because it's pretty heavy reading from Luke 6 verses 27 to 38 and this is the new revised standard version Jesus said to his disciples and a great multitude of people but I say to you that listen love your enemies do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask them, sorry, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. 
If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sin uh, sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return, your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp to our feet. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Those of you who were here last week uh, will remember that uh, we were focusing on the resurrection and facing with hope the existential realities of grief and death. Today, we explore another difficult topic, the challenge of living with other human beings and responding to the human capacity for treating each other poorly or at times indeed in dreadful ways. Now, you might know that in Go Matthew's Gospel is the famous Sermon on the Mount. In Luke's Gospel, however, there is the Sermon on the Plain and this was part of the Sermon on the Plain that you've just heard this morning. It actually begins with Luke's version of the Beatitudes. And any of you who have been following through the lectionary will know that that was the, uh, the text, the Gospel text for last week, even though we didn't use it. We've heard, I think, some of the most difficult and powerful and yet straightforward teachings of Jesus from that sermon this morning. Now, there are lots of expressions that we use in daily conversation that have very interesting origins. And those of you who are from a non-British uh, or Australian background struggle sometimes with the things we say because <laughs> they don't quite make sense. And one of these expressions is doing the hard yards. Now, I've been lo I looked up to see where that came from. And one explanation, and it's not the only one, but one explanation is that it, in doing the hard yards meant going up into the yard arms of a sailing ship and furling or unfurling the sails, sometimes in extremely difficult circumstances. <laughs> Scary stuff, eh? I have trouble getting up a ladder onto the roof. <laughs> Yeah, and I shouldn't, that's right. <laughs> and those of you who don't quite understand that comment, ask Sue afterwards. <laughs> to love enemies and offer forgiveness to those who have wronged us, I think falls into the same category. It is doing the hard yards. It's scary stuff. It's difficult stuff. It's not easy stuff. In one article I read in preparation for this sermon, 
Writer Debbie Thomas says that Jesus is not talking about cheap forgiveness when he's talking about all this stuff. To quote her, forgiveness is not denial. Forgiveness isn't pretending that an offence doesn't matter or that a, wrong, uh, that a wound doesn't hurt. Forgiveness isn't acting as if things don't have to change, end quote. This is difficult stuff. We all know this. And what she's saying is that forgiveness is entwined with justice and truth. Now, the story of Joseph is actually quite instructive in all of this. And if you go back and have another look at it, you'll see that Joseph doesn't simply forgive his brothers as soon as they show up. In fact, they actually, ha they actually name the reality of what they've done in conversation with each other and with their father at some point. They own the truth of what's happened. I've heard people share deeply painful memories of the wrong that they have experienced. Equally, I've heard others confess the wrong that they've committed. And we, we've all experienced these things. And healing from deep wounds is not an easy thing. We've all read the stories of those who have returned from war, haunted and broken by the things they have seen, the things that have been done to them, and the things that they have done to others. We know about the wrongs that have been done by institutions, including the church, when those institutions have failed those who they're supposed to care for. And in today's world, there's so much pain being inflicted through the cruel actions of so many on the internet and in the media. The dreadful things people are prepared to write about others, the trolling of others on social media, media is causing an incredible amount of damage to people and their lives. Maybe you've got young people in your family who've been grievously hurt by the so-called social media friend. The human capacity for dreadful behaviour is truly frightening. And if we are brave enough to look into the, our own hearts, we know that none of us are innocent. We can all hold on to resentments. We can let anger simmer. And equally, we can cause pain to others. But Jesus makes clear that the way of God is a different way. Jesus is, let's have the next slide. Jesus ended up on a cross, but still managed to stammer out to his Father, God the Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. He did what he said. He prayed for his enemies. I came across a wonderful and lengthy prayer by the Serbian Orthodox Bishop, and I'm going to get this wrong, Nikolai Velimirovic, <coughs> whose outspoken criticism of Nazism landed him in Dachau, in this, which is a concentration camp. In this prayer, the bishop muses about his relationship with God, his own sins, his own inner demons, the impact of his enemies and his friends, and the way he should approach those who are doing the vilest of deeds to him and to others. He begins the prayer with a line he repeats a number of times, and he's clearly thinking of our text this morning. Bless my enemies, O Lord, even I bless, even I bless them and do not curse them. Bless my enemies, O Lord, even I bless them and do not curse them. How hard it must have been for him to have offered those words in prayer. Frankly, it is hard to read them, given the crimes of the prison guards. And then towards the end of the prayer, he writes, One hates his enemies only when he fails to realise that they are not enemies, but cruel friends. While the guards in the camp are caught up in the embrace of the darkest evil, before God, Bishop Nikolai seeks to see them as friends, cruel friends, 
but friends. By the way, Bishop Nikolai survived the war, emigrated to the USA because of the rise of communist rule, and today is considered a saint by the Serbian Orthodox Church. God's vision of a renewed world declared in Jesus and made clear in the Magnificat, Mary's great song, at the beginning of Luke's Gospel, is where the powerful are brought low and the lowly lifted up, where love rather than hatred and fear reigns. The church, we, are called to be a community of healing, a community in which the members here embrace and share God's undeserved favour, grace upon grace, a community that prays for its enemies, a community that is prepared to do the hard yards, a community whose life and membership is marked by those things that Paul called the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. I invite you now to come into a time of prayer and I'm going to begin by reading a, a beautiful prayer by the English monk Anselm of Canterbury who lived in the 11th century. And then I'm going to invite you to share with me in a prayer of confession which will be on the screen and finally there'll be a declaration of forgiveness. Let's pray. Almighty and tender Lord Jesus Christ, just as I have asked you to love my friends, so I ask the same for my enemies. You alone, Lord, are mighty. You alone are merciful. Whatever you make me desire for my enemies, give it to them and give the same back to me. If I ever ask for them anything which is outside your perfect rule of love, whether through ignorance, weakness or malice, Good Lord, do not give it to them and do not give it back to me. You are the true light, lighten their darkness. You are the whole truth, correct their errors. You are the incarnate word, give life to their souls. Tender Lord Jesus, let, not be, let me not be a stumbling block to them nor a rock of offence. My sin is sufficient to me without harming others. I, a slave to sin, beg your mercy to, on my fellow slaves. Let them be reconciled with you and through you reconciled to me. And we pray together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We pray your, your mercy to forgive what we have been, to help us to amend what we are and to direct what we shall be, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God who is love knows our faults and loves us still. Stand tall in the knowledge of that love. Understand that you are forgiven and seek God's grace to live faithfully. Alleluia. Amen. Let's sing a, a modern song which picks up this notion, this notion of grace upon grace. Help us to accept each other as Christ accepted us.
I'm getting a bit twisted up here. <laughs> Um, our, um, the various things that are going on will be up on the screen, I think they're right. Um, the, um, just wanted to say in relation to where we are with restrictions, it's a bit complicated. It's always complicated, but it's now even a bit complicated. There's no need to sign in if you're just coming in for worship, but if you're having a cup of tea and coffee, you have to sign in. <laughs> That's complicated, isn't it? And, in, and, and, you're, and while we won't check everyone, we should, but probably we won't, but we should be checking to see if you're vaccinated to have a cup of tea too. So that's, so that's where the regulations are at. So you could be asked about that, but the main thing is that, so we thought we'd just check everybody else in when they came in, because that makes it easier. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. It, it, nothing's straightforward, but you can understand it's because you take your mask off. That, that's the reason that that's happening that way. Um, I don't know, you can let those screen through. I suspect that Ken wants to tell us something. Or, no, Linda's going to. <laughs> <laughs> the second person that's tried. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I want to thank our lovely newcomers who have, have bought with the morning tea for us to share. So thank you very much for that. So when you come in for morning tea, tea and coffee will be served at the servery as normal and there is a table to the side for you to um, partake from the lovely food that has been brought in for us. And also in regard to morning tea, I'm a little bit short on volunteers for morning tea. Um, so if anybody uh, that isn't already on the roster would like to be on the roster, uh, we'd uh, please see me after the service. I'm about to populate the roster for the next couple of months. And I'm particularly looking for somebody uh, or two people for next week. And then I'll get the roster to do its magic in its little database, and uh, you'll get an email if you're on. Uh, so if you can see me after the service, I'll actually be serving at the counter today with Jean. Um, so that would be great, because we know how much we all enjoy being together afterwards and having a cup of tea, but we can't do it unless we've got people to serve. So please see me afterwards. Now, yesterday and Friday were fantastic days, yet again, when we had our collectibles um, open in the chapel on Friday and Saturday. And then on Saturday, we also had a garage sale. Very, um, very exciting to be out there in community and having people from the community coming in that wouldn't normally be at St Luke's or experiencing the friendship of St Luke's. I want to say thank you very much to all those who assisted in setting up, putting away, making cakes, growing plants, donating items for sale, um, buying, and just supporting us, because we know that there are people out there in our community that are supporting us. Uh, one of the things I did this time is using social media, which we do normally, um, I've actually joined a group here in Heighton called the Heighton Residence Group. And there's about two hundred or two and a half thousand people in that group on Facebook, and I promoted it in that group this time. And there are a lot, a lot of faces that we haven't seen before. Um, so it was great um, to uh, you know spread the word a little bit further and see some different people uh, coming to St Luke's. We also um, have started an initiative of having um, local. Uh, Geelong people come and um, sell um, here as well. And we had a lovely uh, garlic selling lady, Liz. She grows the garlic out at Teesdale, but they live uh, locally. Um, so that was great. And we also had a coffee uh, float come and that was very popular as well. So that was good. Um, and sometimes you think, oh, why do we bother you? Um, 
doing certain things, but when you have a look at the, the results and you get $100 here and $200 there and maybe $250 here, it all adds up and sometimes we think, oh, will I, will I bother? Well, I bother putting out the paintings and the, the records this week, and $200 came from there. So that was great. But in total, we raised nearly $3,000 on Friday and Saturday. And of course, this money is going to support our mission to refugees in the community. And it's also um, supporting um, Shigek in her work as our community support worker. So it's really um, important. And God enables us. We just have to put the, the, do the hard yards, Paul. And some of those are a bit hard at about two o'clock in the afternoon when the sun's shining and we're trying to move everything back in and we're getting hot and bothered. But um, it just shows that, you know, with God's um, uh, power and strength behind us, um, we can do pretty amazing things here in this place. So thank you. I'd just like to say a thank you to those people who continue to bring groceries for the Uniting Food Room. Um, in particular, I noticed on Friday things like self-raising flour, not big packets, but um, sort of medium-sized packets of self-raising flour, jam, Vegemite in particular, um, peanut butter and coffee as always, and cooking oil. Uh, some of the staples that we usually don't have a lot of. Thank you. Sorry just to add a couple of extra things, but uh, just to say that uh, the service for Betty Beckcher will be on Friday at Tucker's at 10.30. And uh, Betty was a regular member here at St Luke's on a Sunday as well as on a, at midweek when she wasn't able to come. Um, next week, Paul and Jenny celebrate the wedding of their daughter, so that's something really special. So we know it'll go well. And just up on the screen, it said about Ash Wednesday service. So uh, that's at 7pm on Wednesday the 2nd, I think. I think it said the third, but well, Wednesday and, the third. Yeah, and you've got the midweek service too. On the third, yeah. So, that, so there are a few things that are going on, and thank you for all of that. And yes, I, so some people I'm sure will be able to attend Betty's funeral. I, I won't be able to, but I hope some will be able to go and be part of that. Um, just, just to be clear again, what I said before. So the requirement is to have morning tea that you are vaccinated. Just, just to let you know about that. Um, I think that's covered everything. Uh, no, we've got the right date on that, but the next one's the third. We'll um, move now to our prayers of intercession, which Sue's going to lead us in. Also, as well as uh, Jenny and Paul celebrating Emma and Pete's wedding next weekend, Paul and I are heading to Newcastle to uh, celebrate with the Franklin family. Uh, David is, is getting married in Newcastle next weekend as well. So a few ministers' children uh, fly in the coop or something. As this morning's Gospel reading continues to resonate with each of us, and Paul's words of the hard yards of loving and forgiving make this message clearer for us, we pray. Loving God, you have called us to be a living community, a people bound together as the body of Christ and a family united in love. Yet in our broken world, so many are suffering, so many are hurting. Hear our prayers, Lord. For those whose lives are ruled by hate and vengeance rather than love and justice, 
for those whose homes are not places of love or safety, but places of fear and violence, for those who have no home to speak of and have become invisible on our streets, for lands scarred by war, rumours of war, for places ravaged by disasters, natural or of human origin, for those who are stigmatised because of status, ill health, ethnicity or some other reason. Lord, you asked us to love our neighbours, all of them, not just the ones we choose. Enable us and equip us to carry out your command and to make a positive difference in the lives of those who are our neighbours and are struggling. Hear our prayers, Lord. For all those in our congregations and communities who are ill at home or in hospital, bring your healing hands and soothing balm upon them. For all who are anxiously awaiting treatment, results or appointments by our overwhelmed health services, for anxious relatives and carers who are exhausted and there is no rest and no end in sight. We particularly pray for the family of Betty and so many others at this time. For all our medical, public health, nursing and ancillary staff, and the difficulties they face in overstretched work environments. Compassionate God, show us where we can make a difference. Enable us to be beacons of light in another dark day. Hear our prayers, Lord. Help us to live out all our calling in Christ. Inspire us to be willing advocates for truth, justice and reconciliation. May we walk in faith in the footsteps of Jesus, our lives, our lives marked by love and hope, not judgment. Enable us to make a positive difference in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Perhaps those who are going to help with the serving elements might like to come forward and uncover the table. Just a reminder about how we receive the elements. They're brought to you and you're invited to hold the bread first until we've all received and then we'll, then we'll eat together and you'll receive the, uh, the grape juice, the wine and you're invited to hold that and we'll, we'll eat together too, we'll drink together. Let's give thanks for the many blessings that we have from God. Loving God, we give you thanks that you have blessed us in so many ways. We thank you for the riches of, of life and love that each of us knows. We thank you for our, the possessions we have, our skills, our capabilities. We thank you for this bread and wine. Take and use us and these our gifts. In the name of Christ. Amen. Friends, this is the joyful feast of Jesus. Bread for beloved children, a meal for those expecting scraps, a banquet for last minute guests. Come, your place is at the table. Here Christ meets you and calls you God's own. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
We praise you, gracious Father, our maker and sustainer. You created the heavens and the earth and formed us in your own image. Though we turn away from you, your love for us is constant and you sent your son Jesus Christ to be the saviour of the world. Sharing our human nature, he was born of Mary and baptised in the Jordan. He proclaimed your kingdom by word and deed and was put to death upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him in glory and through him you have sent your Holy Spirit and call us to be your people, a community of faith. And so with angels and archangels and all the choirs of heaven, we join in the triumphant hymn and sing. Holy God, we praise you that on the night in which he was prayed, in which he was betrayed, our Saviour Christ took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Send down your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of Christ. Unite us with him forever and bring us with the whole creation to your eternal kingdom. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we worship you in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ is the bread of life, food for healing and wholeness. Christ is the cup of hope, wellspring of resurrection life. The gifts of God for the people of God. May we who share these gifts be found in Christ and Christ in us.
body of Christ. Body of Christ, broken for you. Keep you all in eternal life. Blood of Christ, keep us all in eternal life. We pray together. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world, united in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. We sing again, make us a channel of your peace. Thanks.
I'd invite you now, Father Timotheus, and your family to come and, and bless us with this song. So. صباح الخير جميعا. بسم الاب والابن والروح القدس اله واحد امين. يسرني هذا الصباح صباح هذا اليوم الاحد المبارك. ان اشارك انا وعائلتي نحن من الكنيسة الشرقية القديمة من العراق صلاة هذا الأحد المبارك من كنيسة القديس لوقا الكنيسة المتحدة from this uh, uniting church, St. Luke's. Father Paul, and 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 also, we like to participate in uh, this uh, spiritual service and also we say thank you for Father Paul and all the serving people here. بعض الصلوات الروحية الشرقية من كنائسنا الشرقية. And they gonna share um, the service, um, a praying service from the East uh, Ancient Church of Iraq. نحن هذا الصباح فرحانين جدا وفخورين جدا بأن نكون معكم. في هذه الخدمة الروحية التي أساسها المحبة ومغفرة الآخرين كما صليتم وقرأتم من الإنجيل المقدس لهذا الصباح. And we are very happy, me and my family, just to share our prayers with you this morning because we share the love of Jesus Christ. مرة ثانية لا أطيل عليكم كلمتي وأشكر الجميع أشكر فاذر بول أشكر جميعكم ونقدم لكم هذه الصلاة المشرقية تشبخ ثلالها بمرومة تشبخ ثلالها بمرومة تشبخ ثلالها بمرومة عالة عشلامة وصورة طاولوني ناشاب خلع الدان العلمين بارخ مار أوندوش ميان إثقداش مار تيتي ملك وثاق نهوي صويا ناخي كنا دوش ميا وبرعا أولان لخ ما سنقان يومانا وشوق لخوبين وقطعين أي كنا دابقنا شواق الخياوين لا تعلى النسيونا إلا بصا من بيشا مطل دي لاخي ملك وثاق إلا وتشبخ في العالم عالمي لا خو ما رد خلا مودينا لا خي شو عم شي خم شبخينا دتوم نخمان الطارين وتو بار وقد نوش شو خل أوه لو را ونروح فقط شو من عالم وعذم العالم من ومين لا خو ما رد خلا دينا لا خي شو عم شي خم شبخينا دتوم نخمان الطارين وتو بار وقد قديشة لها قديشة خلثنا قديشة لا ما يوثى أضرا شوخ الآوى ولورا ونروخ ذقت شو من عالم وعذم العالم من وامين قديشة لها قديشة خلثنا قديشة لا ما يوثى أضرا خمالين أمين اللي يريد فاضر بول البركة الختامية Thank you so much, and we do feel so blessed to have you with us and to have a connection, therefore, with one, churches that are so ancient, that come from many, many 
hundreds and hundreds of years ago these communities have shared together and remain faithful through many, many difficult times. So we are so thankful you're with us. Um, I think we'll stand now, please. We're going to say some words of Desmond Tutu together which have become important for us and then I invite you to bless us in the name of the Holy Trinity. Go, go in peace and remember goodness is stronger than evil, love is stronger than hate, light is stronger than darkness, life is stronger than death, victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Amen. البركة الختامية محبة الله نعمة ربنا يسوع المسيح ومحبة الله الآب وشركة الروح القدس لتكن معنا جميعا الآن وكل أواني وإلى دهر الداهرين آمين 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 Thank you. You come out with us.